Hey, Mike. Oh, Jack, I'm sorry. I thought I had I thought I had you down for two o'clock. I apologize. Uh, that's okay. No worries. No worries. Once once uh well actually first of all, um Mike, it's a pleasure to have you today. That's number one. Uh number right. two, um, what can I say? It's a pleasure to be able to talk to an actor, producer, you know, um, a man who has served in the Marines as well. I mean, my goodness, you're all around busy person what can i say <laughs> i feel like a particularly busy person today my my daughter just came home from a trip abroad and she brought covid with her so we're all exposed and hoping that we don't develop it oh sorry to hear about that i mean i hope you don't develop it i mean my yeah. goodness we had a a long road with that let me tell you yeah um, yeah no i thought you know we've we've come this far without getting the damn thing i hope to <laughs> I hope we don't end up with it now. Yeah, yeah, same here, same here, same here. So um, before I get into, I mean, I'm sure you've been asked so many match questions. Uh, mm. You know, you can almost uh, rhyme them all off. And I mean that, uh, you know, with all respect. But let's talk about your time in the Marines. I mean, you were you were in, was it uh, the Marines from what, 1970, excuse me, 1957 until 1959, right? You, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Well, what was that like for you, if I may ask, sir? Well, it was tough. Um, you know, I, I, I grew up um, with a father who I always thought of as sort of John Wayne, and I figured that. Uh, I, I wanted to live up to what he wanted from me. And um, the Marines always stuck out to me as being the elite fighting force. I read all, you know, saw all the movies and read all the books. And uh, a pal of mine and I used to uh, kind of muse about when we grew up joining the Marines. And um, when I get out of high school, I graduated from high school at uh, 17. And um, at that point, it was either the draft or uh, college, and college was simply not on the agenda for my family. So I said, um, uh, "Time to join the Marines," and I did. And uh, I did. I did well. I uh, served. You know, uh, uh, went through Marine Corps basic training, which is murder, and then was sent to uh, Okinawa well, to advanced training after that, and then sent to Okinawa, um, where I served for a while, and then moved to um, Yokosuka, Japan, um, which was really quite a wonderful, uh, wonderful experience being in Japan. Okinawa was not thrilling. I didn't, you know, you, you put in your time, but you, for, for liberty, when we were in Okinawa, we'd go to the Air Force Base. <laughs> the Air Force Base, had, they had a, they had a, a malt shop and, the, and a soda fountain and they had movies and the stuff that we lived in tents in the, in Okinawa. And uh, we had, you know, nothing but dust and more dust. Uh, so uh, after Okinawa, I went to, the, went to uh, Japan for a while, Yokosuka, Japan. And then after that, back to San Diego, where I served as a guard at uh, Sam, um the Balboa Naval uh, Hospital, and then back to MCRD where I'd trained, and then out. Wow! Wow! Well, yeah. from a Canadian to an American, uh, thank you for your service to your country. Oh, well, that's very kind. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome, sir. Now, 15 years later, I mean, of course, you, well, actually, MASH comes out, that's what, 1972, but you didn't get cast till 75, and that's after Wayne Rogers uh, left, he was a trapper, of course. Um, mm -hmm. well, there was also talk of, they didn't know if uh, Trapper, uh, Wayne, as his real name is, um, was going to leave. That's right. Yeah, they, so, I mean, that's uh, the thing. My, you know, it's it's all conjecture now. I I never I knew Wayne only slightly after I was part of Mash. Not never knew had known him before. And uh, I, I must say, when I met him, uh, the few times I met him, he was a very nice man. Um, actually, there are a couple of good stories about him um, I'll, that I'll tell you if you like. 
Oh, yeah. hey, go ahead. Go ahead. We got lots of time. Um, we got 45 minutes. So, I mean, I gave, I put 45 minutes down. Um, I don't know if we'll get through 45 minutes, but it just gives us extra time to chit chat. Uh, go ahead, Mike. The, 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 MASH was, you know, it was the, what turned out to be the epitome. I mean, it was just extraordinary experience to be part of that show. Uh, and it, and it continues to be today. I mean, people will never forget the show and, it is remains it, it, its popularity remains extraordinarily high um so being part of it was one of the most uh, certainly the best part of although i've had some wonderful moments in my career that was sort of the the as i said the epitome but uh it was also just an extraordinary time in my life uh, but to but to back up a minute you know from getting out of the marines in 59 I guess that was, yeah, I think that was right. Um, then I had to figure out what I was going to do with my life. And and um, I had always wanted to be an actor. So I made some small steps in that direction and finally got, got to a place where I had to either commit and, and, and try to be an actor um, or not. And I, and I made that commitment and got into actors workshops and did a lot of things that, got me some some uh, visibility in the industry and I got a few small roles and then a little bigger roles and then a soap opera and then a, a television series called The Interns with Rod Crawford. And that resulted in a television series at Universal uh, with Tony Quinn, which was quite extraordinary experience, I must say. Um, and then when that show was canceled, I thought... No, they'd let me go and I'd be an independent actor again, but they wanted to keep me under contract. So I was under contract at Universal doing shows there for uh, two years after the Quinn show went down. And um, at that time, the two things that I thought, I think of, of, are sort of interesting. Uh, one was a, there was a casting director at Universal named Bert Metcalf that I'd gotten to know a little bit. He'd cast me in some shows. We got to know each other just a little bit. And then one day I was walking toward the commissary, I guess, for lunch on the lot. And he said, uh, I bumped into him and he said, I just want to say goodbye. I'm, I'm going away. And I said, really, where are you going? He said, I'm going over to Fox. I'm going to do a show there. Didn't say any more about it, but it turned out to be MASH. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, I'm not sure if it was before or after that. Well, it must have been must have been before that. No, I'm sorry. It could have been after that. Bert was doing a number of things, setting up the show and what have you. I got a job. Uh, uh, a friend of mine called me and he said, um, so this was after. Um, the friend of mine called me and he said, uh, we were going to have dinner. And I, I said, I'll come to him in his place and pick him up. And I did. And he, I, I said, let's go. And he said, well, I can't leave yet. I, he said, what do, what do you mean? I said, what do you mean? He said, oh, my favorite show is on the air. I have to watch the end of it. So I said, oh, okay. And I came into his place and he was watching MASH. And MASH was not a show I'd ever seen. It wasn't a show I knew anything about. I was under contract at Universal and doing shows and not concerned much with watching television. And, uh, and I remember uh, to this day, walked in and he said, this is, uh, sit down, it's going to, and there was a scene with um, Gary Berga, Radar. Um, and it was that thing that he did so wonderfully. He was this kid, a naive, sweet young man in the middle of a war, trying to keep everything, to, uh, have everything to make sense and trying to keep order and do what the colonel needed him to do. And, and uh, bombs are going off and people blood is being shed and he's just trying to stay sane and i thought god what a what a wonderful wonderful show i mean that oh yeah great acting but that that sense of uh uh the show being about something that 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 spoke to human life i thought jesus this is fabulous absolutely I went back then, you know, to Universal and they wanted me to do, you know, Dr. Well, Marcus Welby, and they wanted me to do the six million dollar man and they wanted me to do this and that. And I got a, a call um, from a producer on the lot 
and he said, I would like you to uh, do my show. I, I'm doing a new television show and I'd like you to be the star of it. And I said, well, that's, that's certainly very flattering and very kind. Thank you. Um, I'd like to see the script. And he said, uh, of course. And he sent me the script. And I, I think it was called Jerry. And, and I don't think it ever got on the air. I'm sorry. Hang on a second. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't talk now. Um, I don't think it ever got on the air, but at any rate, it was a silly, uh, um, from my perspective, it was a silly kind of three jokes to a page situation comedy. And I thought, mm. so I said the thanks, but no thanks. And he said, you're turning down the starring role in a television series. And I said, yeah, I guess I am. And he said, <laughs> he said, why? And I didn't want to say, well, I think your show is dumb. Mm -hmm. So I said, um, you know, it's not MASH. No. And he looked at me and kind of shook his head. And I said, it, it, it's it, what I meant to, what I meant for him to understand was it was not about anything, no. but I, I'll never forget that because I don't know how many months later it was that I got a call from the studio uh, from my agent saying that this was would have been a year later or more um, that Wayne Rogers is considering leaving MASH and would I be willing to uh, come over and talk to them about possibly replacing him? And I said, no, oh, would I? Could I? I'm under contract at Universal. And, and he said, well, it's, you know, that's those things happen. Um, so I went over and I met uh, Larry uh, Gelbard and Gene Reynolds and Bert Metcalf, who I had known at, you know, and I thought, well, God, you know, I said, look, this, this is wonderful. I'm, I'm thrilled to be even considered for this, but I'm, and I'm nervous as a cat in spite of the fact that I've done, I don't know how many television shows now. And, but I, I find, I, I think your show is really something special. And, um, we just talked for a while and they said, as you've suggested, they said, um, you know, we're not sure about this. We're trying to work out the contract with Wayne. We're not sure um, what um, uh, what the result's going to be, so we can't promise anything. And I said, no, I'm, I, I understand that and expect nothing. But I'm thrilled to be considered if, in fact, he leaves. Um, and I said, the one thing I would not want to do is step in as Trapper John, right. become, you know, have an actor replace him. If I may say so, Mike, for one second there, um, I think in an interview you did in the 70s, I think, you know, um, I think they were, uh, to my understanding, hoping you'd become Trapper John McIntyre, but no, uh, you you definitely told them right off the bat that if that is the case, you wouldn't do it. No, I didn't want it. I, would, it, I thought it'd be a big mistake. Yeah, um, yeah, but DJ Honeycutt was definitely the right character, I think, uh, for okay. you to play in Mesh. You know, I really do. Thank you. I, I couldn't agree more. But they and they reassured me. They said, "No, look." He said, "They said uh, the, the, and this is the military. People transfer out. People are killed. Uh -huh. people, when, when things happen." Yeah. So what we have in mind is a character um, who's not a womanizer like Hawkeye and Trapper. <laughs> He's a married man with a child at home. Um, who's not particularly happy about being <laughs> drafted into the military and, and you know, sent to Korea. Um, how would you feel about that? Uh, and I said, are you serious? I said, to model fidelity in nat on national television? Absolutely. <laughs> wow. So anyway, the long story short is mm -hmm. that's what happened and I got the role. Wow. And just so everybody knows the TV show MASH and what it stands for. It stands for Mobile Army Surgical Hospital, right? right. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Actually, it took me a while to actually get that down straight, but that's what it stands for. And um, people may not know this. Well, maybe the new brunch, the the old school uh, would know this. Uh, MASH is definitely based on real Korean War, 1950s Korean War, you know. <laughs> And not just you, not just you. Um, I think uh, Alan Alda also served in the army as well, didn't he? Did he mm -hmm. serve along yeah. with, uh, along yeah. with, along with.